if I knew my life were coming to an end today, I, w I, I wouldn't be upset. But I would have regrets. Regrets that uh, that have come to me as recent as uh, that stem from something as recent as last night, which is a continuation of things that have been the narrative for a great deal of my life, for damn sure most, if not all, of my adult life. I regret those times where I stood by the phone and anticipation and anxiety awaiting a response from someone when I should have been doing something else. I should have been focusing on myself. I think it all comes down to me focusing on myself. Every regret I have, really, most of my regrets at least, I don't know yet, I gotta flush out. Most of my regrets it all comes down to me not putting myself first, which is really fucked up because I get this narrative as I'm a I'm a narcissist. I kind of wish I were a narcissist because then I would put myself first more often. But that's just not the case. I let everybody take up occupancy in my mind. I have let them live in my head rent free. I let fictional fears, well, I mean, that's what fears are anyway. They're fictional. Most of the things we fear don't even come true. But I let these fears exist in my mind and they create a confine of sorts. They create a, a prison. I allowed these things to take up occupancy for so long. And all it really led to was me being gun shy and unsure about myself. By the way, I don't say these things because this is my entirety at this point. I've definitely made a lot of progress. But I, and I don't, you know, I don't just mention this to vent because hopefully there's something you can take away from this. But I was just really thinking because I, I see it in other people. People feel empty. People feel like there's no relief coming. Until this is all over. That's the only relief. People feel that way. I can sense the loneliness in people because I sense it in myself. I see the heartbreak in others. For the same reason. I see the existentialism. Find its way like it's never found its way before to people. To the everyday people. People from all walks of life questioning this existence. Are we here to suffer? Are we here to be lost? Are we here to conform and to concede and to bow down to that which does not favor us? that does not benefit us and will quite frankly puts us deeper in the hole, in a hole, whatever that hole may be. And it has us comparing our low lights to people's highlights that we see on social media. Not quite understanding that most people who are posting these highlights are equally in some shit, more or less. More importantly, if not more. And we're all just trying to, not all of us, but a great deal of us, we try to project a happy lifestyle because who wouldn't want to have a happy lifestyle? I can't blame anybody for that. 
I more so have a quarrel with people who they know damn well they feel like shit. They feel all these negative emotions and they get some type of relief from talking down on other people. People who are in the same situation as them or people who are more successful. Where do I stand in all of this? I've started this conversation talking about how I wouldn't I wouldn't care if it ended today. I wouldn't be mad. Where do I stand in all of this? Where am I at? Quite frankly, this could be the turn of something positive. As with each disappointment, I get closer and closer to the ultimate acceptance is that there's so many, so many things out of my control. I can't let it, let it affect me uh, emotionally because whatever's going to happen is, is, is going to happen. And I hate that too many times, at least I'm learning, but I hate that too many times I look back on an interaction or I look back on my passivity and I'm like, you you spent all this time on the phone talking to somebody an hour and a half. You could have been reading. You could have been writing. You could have been creating. You could have been taking that course. And you're so drained. Not because it was a, a stimulating conversation, but you're so drained. As the conversation ended sourly, now you don't want to do anything else. Now your cortisol levels are high. Stress hormone. Now you can't go to sleep. Now you're going to be up all night. Now you're not going to do anything productive until you have anything that resembles quality sleep. That cycle has to be broken. I have to get to that level of ultimate acceptance. Yeah, I started this video off with the acceptance that Y'all can have this shit. I could be done with this. I'm not going to commit suicide. I promise that I will not commit suicide. But if there was some external force to take me away, or some force to take me away, whatever it is, well, then so be it. And I think no matter if you're happy or sad or however you feel about life in general, That's one thing that should be accepted just because it's inevitable, you know? Young young today, old tomorrow, here today, gone tomorrow. Existing in this physical realm today, a memory tomorrow, at best. Uh, maybe not at best, but you know. I don't know how long I have left. Sure, there's a great deal of me, a big part of me who wants to live as long as I can, watch my children grow, grandchildren, maybe even great-grandchildren, who knows? Wouldn't that be something? That could very well be my reality. It is the curiosity that really keeps me alive not because I feel accepted by people. That's for damn sure. The acceptance never, it, it just never worked for me. Because uh, I put it on a pedestal. A desperate man puts everything but himself on a pedestal. Uh, and I'm just coming to that conclusion right now. I'm sure I somewhere in the back of my mind subconsciously I understood that. But a desperate man puts everything on the pedestal. And why? It's because when he looks at the world, he measures value. He never looks at himself to measure said value. He never sees the value in himself. 
And if he does, I'm talking about the desperate man. He undervalues himself. And when you undervalue something, you say, well, what's the worth? You get in bed with a woman you undervalue, that you don't value very much. You probably feel disgusted when you're done with her. If you can even get it up. And I know how that may sound, but it, it's, it's, it's true. You know? A lot of us can't even look ourselves in the mirror because we're so disgusted with what we see. And it don't even really have anything uh, to do with uh, our reflection, our skin, our flesh. It has, it has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with the eyes. Can't even look at ourselves. Can't look ourselves in the eyes. And I realized, shit, I'm the same way. Not even because... Uh, not just because I'm lazy. Sometimes I forget to even look myself in the mirror or wash my face. Just leave out the house. I think I see what a lot of other people see when they look at me and they see that I'm tired. The fatigue that I can't always seem to shake. But I do sit with my inner child. My inner child's always with me. That that gets me emotional because that boy felt so scared. And he was so timid and so shy. He didn't really feel protected by anybody. And who I've become now is that person who's Protecting that inner child. Furthermore, my child, my child, my actual child, my daughter, is a lot like me when I was a child. So it's like I'm getting another opportunity to take care of that child. And I think in in some ways it is revitalizing. I feel rejuvenated. Um, within my inner child feels replenished in all the R-E words <laughs> feels replenished to kind of break the wheel and take a different course of action with my daughter and hopefully she will never know sorrow on the level that I've known it even though sometimes I question what will be that moment or what will be those moments that will inevitably crush her like it has crushed many of us to the point where we are afraid to love, afraid to contact somebody, afraid to tell the truth, afraid to shoot our shots. These modern times have us fucked up in ways that I don't think most of us even understand. One thing about the human experiences that we are so resilient we just keep finding ways to adjust to everything but all the same we are very slow to find healing that should come from problems we endure the pain the suffering we never really find healing we just find different ways to distract ourselves Sex, weed, liquor, television, food, gossip, you name it. But I don't want to be a part of that. I don't. I want to do special things. I've tainted what's supposed to be special for me because loneliness creeps into everything. It, it, it makes you question why? Why are we even doing this? Why even try? Why bother? And so I'm, I find myself on these campaigns that I share with others. And it's just like, you got to be what others don't give you. 
You got to give what others don't give you, rather. You got to be what others can't be for you. Be the change that you wish to see. All those rhetorics. And I believe in that 100%. Like, I believe in getting rid of these expectations for others and place them on yourselves, not even on the outcome. And just shed your essence into this world every chance that you get. Don't expect reciprocity. It's a setup for disappointment. Anything related to expectations is a setup for disappointment. People don't give a fuck. People don't give a fuck like you give a fuck. So give extra fucks. Discernment also. Give extra fucks for things you should give extra fucks about. Give less fucks about things you shouldn't be giving a fuck about. That's how you balance it out. Extreme here, extreme there. All right, and with that said, uh, thank you. I, I'm out.